Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe right here, right now, to our YouTube channel, Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it, and I'd be able to send watches like this to your inbox as soon as tomorrow morning. If you like this watch, you can buy it on thewatchbox.com. Buy, trade, and sell luxury watches 24 hours a day and globally on thewatchbox.com. And today we are discussing the Grand Seiko Spring Drive Chronograph SBGB003. 44 millimeters in stainless steel. This one is both gloriously gorgeous, and it's beautiful for both right and left halves of your brain. A masterpiece of mechanical engineering and beautiful in its details. This is a watch that wears easily on my 16 centimeters circumference wrist in spite of the fact that it is an oversized 44 millimeters in diameter and that's not including the monstrous pump pushers, crown guards, or crown. You'll note it's also fairly thick. The timepiece is 14.7 millimeters thick and there's a little bit of a flare to the bezel that could impede dress cuffs. You should be okay with the jacket, but the tight sleeve beneath probably not going to clear the watch. Lug to lug, the watch has a reasonable 50.6 millimeter span, but when you add the solid end links of the bracelet, and they do flare out a little bit, the span across the wrist becomes a more robust 54.6. So I would say that the watch, as fitted to the bracelet, is probably for wrists about 14 and a half centimeters in circumference or larger. Put it on a strap and the lug spacing is 20 millimeters for those of you who wish to accessorize and you'll find that the watch could wear on a 14 centimeter circumference wrist. Whether the style is yours, being oversized or not, it would sit securely. The bracelet is a wonderfully made piece. Uh, Grand Seiko's Zeratsu optically smooth polish present and correct on the bevels of the lugs as well as on the highlights of the bracelet. Nicely made. It's not just that they're polished on their flanks and satin on their top. It's that there's a gorgeous bevel that runs perfectly aligned down the flank of the links. So the attention to detail factor is very high. The links are of high quality and all feels quite robust. Unlike the titanium watches, you can see right here that this Grand Seiko uses screws to fix individual removable links, not pins and sleeves. And on the underside, just like Rolex, there are large gaps between the links to aerate the wrist on a hot day and avoid pinching skin or pulling hair. The clasp is quite robust, single fold deployant, satin finished internally. It features a polished Grand Seiko relieved against a blasted base and then a satin finished surround twin trigger release. This is not friction fit. There's no cheap clamshell. You have to press both of the polished triggers to open the clasp. And then you'll note that if you have a strap tool, you can micrometrically size using four standard adjustments inside the clasp. Jumping back to the case, you can see that it's more interesting in its profile than many contemporary Breitling and Rolex products. Omega still does bevels quite nicely, though not quite as artisanally as Grand Seiko does it. Omega bevels are generally mechanically finished. With Grand Seiko, it is actually done by hand with an artist executing what Grand Seiko calls Zeratsu finish. Marketing term, yes, but undoubtedly executed by hand because a tin plate is used along with the eye and hand pressure to create these bevels, which are not just optically flawless, but they're perfectly matched in terms of size and spread on both sides. And it is not easy to finish something with industrial precision using only your eye and feel. So this is a cut above in terms of case finish. This is actually an artisanal product. Satin finish on the flank to somewhat mute the oversized dimensions of the watch. Let's jump to the dial now get close, give ourselves a bit more light because the watch is off the wrist. The first thing you note is that the tachometer bezel is actually capped with a sapphire, which is an upscale touch that I adore. It ensures that unlike, for example, an Omega Moon watch with its anodized aluminum insert that gets scratched up and gouged, this will always look glossy, gleaming, and if you're not one to shatter sapphire crystals, you're not going to be one to chip or shatter the sapphire tack. You can also see that there's a little bit of a domed profile of the sapphire over the center. The dial base itself is black with hand applied diamond polished and faceted indices. A lot going on here, but quite handsome and nicely balanced. You can see that there's a register outboard to make the reading of minutes as well as fractions of a second a little bit easier. A few flourishes of color on the chronograph seconds hand as well as on the running seconds hand tip at nine o'clock and the power reserve at roughly seven o'clock. The dial has 
logically aligned registers for the chronograph, so it makes sense that these would be aligned with each other so you can quickly read seconds, minutes, and hours just like that, with running seconds moved off to the side as it's not entirely necessary when you also have a power reserve scale. There's an aperture around the date window which I appreciate. You can see that both the hands at center and the little window around the aperture are hand finished and faceted in the same fashion as the indices themselves. You'll also note that the hands at center feature a combination of polished faceted edges and satin finished tops. Very impressive. Grand Seiko dials hold their own against Rolex. Now, of course, it is a spring drive system, which means you're dealing with caliber 9R84, and that means you have a spring drive base with a column wheel vertical clutch mechanical chronograph on top. So let's explain the two. First, most of you guys will know all about column wheel function selectors. You can see the column wheel underneath my finger. It makes for a very crisp action. You feel it and you hear it. I would say it is one of the sharpest and most positive chronograph pusher feels that I have experienced in the industry. The Longa Datagraph is more refined, but this is as crisp as anything I've ever experienced. And because it also uses a vertical clutch, there's no jump to the chronograph seconds hand, and there's no negative consequence to just leaving the chronograph running. Plus, when you reset a vertical clutch chronograph, it always resets precisely to the index of 12 because there are no teeth to create play or slack in the system. Now, let's talk about spring drive because spring drive is a hybrid of quartz and mechanical that is all too often misunderstood. And let's get super close so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, this is a 41 joule mechanical movement for almost all intents and purposes. Automatic winding with a three day power reserve. The spring creates all of the motion and meters all of the energy. There is no battery, there is no capacitor, there is a governing wheel that moves in one direction. The recipient of the spring energy from the main spring barrel. That governor, as it turns, it creates an induced electrical current that wakes up a quartz oscillator the feedback loop created by the quartz oscillator times the watch using a back EMF or a countervailing electromagnetic force also created by induced current to slow or speed up the unidirectional wheel that moves in only one direction. And the wheel governs the mechanical drivetrain that moves the hands on the dial. So again, no motors, no batteries, no capacitors, and only a bare quartz oscillator activated by an induced electrical current. It is a watchmaker assembled, watchmaker regulated, and lifetime serviceable movement. I cannot overemphasize this will last as long as any Patek Philippe 324, as long as any Audemars Piguet 3120. And on top of that, you do get that three-day power reserve, you get the power reserve indicator, you get a hacking or stop seconds function, so when you pull the crown, you stop the seconds and allow synchronization to a reference time, and you get a quick set for the date, so you can rapidly cycle that should the watch run down or encounter an irregular length month. That is a lot of watch and a lot of technology. Why bother with all that complexity with the spring drive system? Well, here's why. Not only do you have a completely smooth hand sweep, there are no steps, there are no jumps, it's no level of vibration, it's just continuous, and that is unique, but you get quartz levels of accuracy with a mechanical movement, and the result is plus or minus 15 seconds per month with spring drive. Keep in mind, that a Swiss chronometer, COSC, meeting the ISO 3159, is allowed to deviate minus four plus six per day. And that is the beauty of spring drive, and the beauty of a spring drive Grand Seiko chronograph. Equally suitable for left brains and right. You can see this one and make it yours on the watch box.